Welcome back to my playlist where I show you every single step that you have to do to take a quadcopter from a pile of parts on the desk to a... Folks, I've been saying this intro every single video for like 18 videos and I put it at the beginning of every video in case someone randomly drops in in the middle of the playlist so you know what you're getting into. You want to build a this quadcopter? You want to build this quadcopter? You want to fly it with Betaflight for racing and freestyle? Playlist in the video description. You want to fly it with iNav and be like GPS and return to home and... I hope I didn't break my USB port. That would be bad. But watch this video. Playlist, video, description. Here's what we're doing in this video. We are going to set up flight modes. Flight modes so you can tell the quadcopter, you know, arm, disarm, uh, return to home... Do you want to fly it like an acro freestyle quad or do you want to fly it more like a DJI Phantom? Well, you're going to uh, tweedle the little switches on your flippity flops and then you're going to do flippity flippity. Folks, I've been recording, I'm like 18 videos into this playlist and I'm uh, I'm a little loopy. Let's, I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. I have to say it or people will comment below. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to plug in the usb port that we thankfully didn't break in the intro we're going to connect with the inav configurator and we're going to get our controller and we're going to turn it on and when you set up aux modes um there are two things there are two steps one is telling the radio this you know what? I already explained this really thoroughly back in the beta flight video. So just like I did in some of the previous ones, I'm going to cut in some of the beta flight stuff so you get the concepts. And actually, knowing how to set the radio up is exactly the same between beta flight and INAV. The radio doesn't care. I'm going to cut that footage in, and then we're going to come back and we're going to take a look at the INAV flight modes. But then you'll already know actually how to sort of set up the flight modes. What flight modes means is basically the ability to like flip a switch on your controller and like have the quadcopter do something in uh, in response to that. And the most basic thing that we're going to have it do is arm the quadcopter. Arming means that the quadcopter is ready to fly. So when you first plug the quadcopter in, if you move the sticks around, nothing will happen. And that's for safety. We don't want to plug the quadcopter in and bump the sticks and have it spin the props while we're still holding it, have it injure us. That can be some serious injuries if that happens by accident. So before we can fly, we have to arm the quadcopter. And we do that in the Betaflight Modes tab. Now here in the Betaflight Modes tab is where we're going to add an arming uh, range. But there's something we have to do first, and we'll have to go by the receiver tab. Because if you look at the receiver tab, so I've got eight channels here. Um, you can see that there's actually 16 total channels, but we're only using the first eight channels for reasons which I gave earlier. And our first four channels are used for the sticks, pitch, roll, yaw, and uh, throttle. But then we have aux, one, two, three, and four. So we have four auxiliary channels that we can use for these functions. And you'll notice that like when I move the switches, none of the aux channels are moving. And in fact, there's way more switches here on this transmitter than there are aux channels that we could possibly want to use. So what we need to do is we need to tell the controller which one of these switches goes with which one of these aux channels. And here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to long press the model key and that's going to take me to model setup. And then I'm going to press the page key until I get to the mixes screen. And the mixes screen is where we tell the radio which physical control, like a stick or a switch or one of these little twiggly knobs here, we tell the radio which physical control is going to control which of these aux channels. So we can see that channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 are already mapped to our four main control channels. And we're going to leave that. You, you don't want to change that. But I'm going to scroll down to channel 5, and I'm going to click the mouse wheel or the jog wheel, and that's going to create a new mix for channel 5. Now, a mix has, there's a whole bunch of parameters here that you could screw with. But the good news is most of those parameters are really more for, like, airplanes than quadcopters. And setting up mixes in a quadcopter is usually pretty freaking simple. Here's all you got to do. 
You can name the mix if you prefer to give it a name. I'm not going to do that here, but the same way that we named the quadcopter way back when we very first created a model, we could put some words in here and name it. I'm going to go down to the source parameter, and the source parameter tells the radio which switch or other physical control is controlling this aux channel. And right now the source is S1, which is, oh, here we go. It's this knob here. So since the source defaults to S1, you can see that when I turn that knob, the aux one is moving. By the way, little point of potential confusion here. We're working with channel five, but we're moving aux one. Aux one is channel five, aux two is channel six, because the first four control channels are used for the main sticks controls. And then the first auxiliary channel is channel five. So channel five is aux one. And we can see that that's not what we want. We don't want this slider to control it. What I want you to do is I want this switch here. We're going to use this switch on the left-hand side to arm the quad. We're going to arm and disarm. Very easy to get at with your index finger. Super simple. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the source parameter, S1. I'm going to click the mouse wheel or the jog wheel one time until it's blinking. And then you could scroll through this list to try to find that switch, but there's a way easier way to do it. All you have to do is just go and move the switch one time and it automatically picks up that switch as the source for the mix. And now you'll see that if I move that switch, aux one goes from 987 to 2011. And that's what we need to do. Now that we've done that, we can go back to the modes tab and we can finish setting up our arming mode. So now you know the steps to create a link between a switch and a given aux channel. And we've created a link between this switch here and aux five or no, channel five, aux one, sorry about that. Um, if we go to the receiver tab, we should see that as I move that switch, channel five moves up and down. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell INAV, I almost said beta flight. <laughs> we need to tell INAV what it means when we move that channel. What is that switch gonna actually do? And we do that by going to the modes tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose the mode that we're going to modify. This, in this case, it's going to be the arming mode. Uh, it's, you have to have an arming mode if you want to fly the quad. And we're going to hit add range. Now, Betaflight has an auto detect feature where well, if you just flip the channel, it will pick up which channel you're moving. But INAV doesn't have that. So we're just going to pick channel 5. We know that we assigned this switch to channel 5. And what we'll see is that as we move that switch, this little uh, blue marker moves up and down to show the current channel position. What we then want to do is put the switch into the armed position. And what I like to do is I like to have the switch be pushed away from me to arm and pulled toward me to disarm. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Different people have different conventions. Um, but for me, the ability to rest my finger on the switch when I'm disarmed and no, that's how I, that's how I care. This is how I carry my transmitter when I'm not using it. Um, actually, I, I raise the throttle when the quad is disarmed because when the throttle is raised, the quad will refuse to arm. It's not safe. And so this is how I prevent myself from accidentally arming the quad while I'm like carrying it for some reason. Um, but that's how I'll carry it is with my finger resting on the arm switch and the throttle up and my thumb resting on the throttle. Now I'm left-handed, so it makes it easy to carry that way. Um, when I fly, I have my finger resting like this, and that means that I can activate this switch if I want to, but at no point will I accidentally, like if I was going for this switch, I could not I could accidentally disarm. So this is an armed position, and while I'm flying, there's no chance of me accidentally disarming it, and then that's my disarm position, and if I rest my finger that way, there's no chance of me accidentally arming. That's how I like to do it. Okay, I may have over-explained it, but this is like if you were describing how you design the safety mechanism on a firearm. Quadcopters are really dangerous if they arm when you didn't expect them to. So you really want to put some thought into this. Okay, so I'm going to push this into the armed position, which is pushed away. I'm going to look at where that blue tick mark is on the channel. I'm going to drag this range so that it covers that blue tick mark, and I'm going to hit save. And now, we arm 
the quadcopter will arm. Well, actually it won't arm because there are various safety checks that will prevent it from arming. And one of those safety checks is that when you're plugged into the computer, it will refuse to arm, but never fear. We'll get around to that. Now I wanna show you that I have set up some additional mixer lines to link additional switches to channels six, seven, and eight. So I've got switch SD on channel six, switch SH on channel seven, and switch SC on channel eight. And that's gonna be these two face switches and this momentary switch here on the back corner. And you can go ahead and set those mixes up so your mixer screen looks the same as mine using the technique showed earlier in the video where you create new mix, then you go to the source parameter, you move the switch to assign the switch as the source, and that's all there is to it. But the real question is, what are we gonna do with these switches? And I'll show you my typical setup for a quadcopter, but my typical setup doesn't have GPS modes like iNav does. So we're gonna have some extra stuff in here and we're gonna have to figure out what it's gonna be. But my typical setup is as follows. This switch here, switch SD, which I've got assigned to channel six, which is gonna be aux two, channel six, in the middle position, it's angle mode. Does it have flip crash or turtle mode? Really? Well, normally it's turtle mode to flip the quadcopter over after it crashes, but it looks like this doesn't have turtle mode. Let's just hit save on that real quick. All right, so we're not gonna get turtle mode. What's that third position gonna be? Angle mode? Angle mode is just auto level mode where when you center the stick, the quad levels back out again. But angle mode isn't like, like DJI mode. You still have to fly the quad. It doesn't position hold or anything like that. So let's go back to the modes tab and let's say that the third flight mode should be, so I'm reading in the INAV wiki and actually altitude hold isn't what I want. Altitude hold will hold the quadcopter at a predetermined altitude, but then it will still fly forward, backward, left, right as if it was in auto level mode. But I think we, it won't hold position. In other words, if you release the sticks, the quad will still drift. It'll drift at the same altitude, <laughs> but it'll still drift. And that's not what most people want when they're thinking about this type of flying. I think what we actually want is position hold, nav pause hold. Position hold will hold the quadcopter just in space, staying in one position until you move the sticks, kind of like how a DJI drone flies. And I think that's the dream, right? So we're actually gonna do nav pause hold. Go back here and we'll delete nav alt hold. There we go, nav pause hold. Okay, so that's gonna be on channel six. I do like that they just use the channel names instead of aux two because converting between channel six and aux two is confusing to a lot of people. We're gonna put this in the down position and that's, we're gonna look at where the blue tick mark is and we're gonna drag that to cover that blue tick mark. So what we've got is full acro mode when this switches up, angle mode, that's just auto level, but you're still basically completely flying the quad. And then when this is down, it's the quad is fully flying itself. And if you release the sticks, it just sits there and goes, what do you want me to do next? In other words, it's pretty hard to crash in that mode. That's the hope anyway. There's another mode that I like to set up and it is the beeper mode. Um, beeper is useful if you like crash your quadcopter and it's lost in the tall grass and you don't know where it is, you can make it beep. And I set up beeper mode on this momentary switch here. That's switch S, uh, SH, I believe. Uh, this quadcopter doesn't have a beeper. I'm gonna hit add range. I'm gonna choose, let's see, that is SH is channel seven. I'm gonna choose channel seven here. I'm gonna pull that switch. I'm gonna look at the position and I'm gonna drag to cover. Um, in Betaflight, there is a function where the motors can beep. Instead of, if you don't have a beeper on your quad, the motors can just go beep, 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 uh, like they do when, they, when you first plug in the battery. That's the motors making that sound. A lot of people don't know that. Um, I'm not sure if INAV has that, but we can see the beeper mode becoming active as I pull, but well, there's no battery plugged in, so there, we'll have to see if it beeps. If not, maybe we'll do another video where we install a beeper on it. But we're gonna set up the beeper mode regardless. Now we've got this last switch here, and I don't know what that's gonna do. Let's take this third switch, and let's make return to home. This is um, switch SC, which is channel eight. 
we're going to take channel 8. Let's make return to home be all the way down on the switch. Now there's something you may have noticed, but if you didn't notice it, I want to make sure you know that there's a convention that on a controller, the switches pushed away from you is the default position for all the switches. And I've done that. When the switches are away, I'm in my default mode. And for me, that's acro mode on the quad. But if you wanted to start flying in position hold mode and have that be your default, you would switch so that position hold mode was the switch in the up position. And you might put acro when the switch is all the way down. Um, it's a good convention because before you go to fly, you can just kind of flip your switches to that position. Just kind of, just kind of go, you're good to go. The exception to that for me is the arm switch, which some people disagree with, but this is how I've always done it. I feel more secure having the arm switch under my finger like this. And so I break that convention where normally you might have disarmed be away and armed be towards. I, I go against that. But in every other case, switches pushed away is the default sort of neutral position. Now, if we're going to play with return to home, there is a parameter that we're going to want to check. And that is in the advanced tuning tab. That is the return to home altitude. And the way that return to home works is the quadcopter will fly back home. But what altitude should it be at when it flies back home? If you think about it, if you, if you fly like too low to the ground or something, you could crash into something. So the return to home altitude defaults to at least and a certain altitude. And the quadcopter, if it is below that altitude, it will climb to that altitude and then fly home at that altitude. The default altitude is 10,000 or uh, 1,000 centimeters, which is 10 meters, which is about 30 feet for those of us, 33 ish feet for those of us in America. Um, but what if you like, what if you like flew up over a tall tree and then you flew down? If you flew to 10, if you flew over a 30 meter tree, but you flew back home at 10 meters, you could see you could crash into the tree. Well, they're smart enough to, to handle that. If you fly, over an obstacle, it remembers the tallest obstacle that you flew over and it will ascend to that altitude and then fly home at that altitude, or a little bit higher than that altitude perhaps. I think I'm gonna change this value and here's why. If you think about my house, I have tons of trees and these trees are maybe, I don't know, 40 meters, I think. I've, I've seen them on my DJI Mavic Mini. They're pretty tall, 40 meters in feet. Is that realistic? <laughs> 40 meters to feet. 130 feet. That's that's ambitious. I guarantee you many of these trees are at least 20 meters though. 70 feet. Guaranteed. Man, some of them may be a little, little more than that. And what I don't want to happen is for me to fly around my house and then hit return to home and the quadcopter flies straight home at the highest altitude it experienced while it was flying which is below the tops of the trees, and then it crashes in a tree. So I'm going to think about the highest trees on my property. And I'm going to set that to my return to home altitude, at least that value. And in fact, the return to home altitude, I believe it is calculated as height above home position because it doesn't know, it doesn't have a topology map that tells it that the ground level, right? So if you're at home position and then you fly down a hill and then you fly home at 10 meters, it's going to be 10 meters above the home position. Well, my property is actually way hillier than you think. So I might want to add even a few meters to that just to be safe. So let's say I usually fly from my porch. You go up the hill. That might be, oh, 10 meters of out of gain. And then another let's say 20 meters for the tree, let's say 35 meters, 3500 is gonna be my return to home altitude, at least 35 meters above the home position. Another setting you might wanna tweak is whether to land after return to home. If you trigger return to home, the quadcopter can come in and it can attempt to do an auto landing. But if you don't have a sonar sensor, the altitude measurement may not be precise enough for it to actually gently land. A downward facing sonar sensor will give a very, very precise measurement of the copter's altitude and it can land very precisely. Um, what you can do is you can set this to land after return to home never, and in case it'll just fly back and wait for you to land it, always, in which case it'll do its best to land, good luck, or 
only on fail-safe, meaning that if you manually trigger return to home by flipping a switch, it will not attempt to auto land. But if it fail safe then maybe your transmitter isn't even working and it may as well attempt to auto land. I'm going to leave this as always because I'm curious what happens when it tries to auto land. Does it crash? Does it work? I don't know. And there we go. Now we've got our flight mode set up and we are almost ready to attempt to go fly the quadcopter. But there's one more step we need to do and that is calibration. We need to calibrate all the sensors. You don't spend a lot of time calibrating sensors on a on an acro quad because what are the sensors doing? They're barely doing anything. You're just flying it. But that's going to be the topic for the next video. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.